Hi guys, it's HBYT and welcome back to a brand new video. Now, today's video, we have an Android phone which has very similar dimensions to the Samsung S8 in terms of the shrunken bezels at the top and bottom and of course that 18 by 9 ratio which is becoming very, very popular right now. And it's only around 90. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you footage of the quick unboxing, show you what's inside the box and then I'm gonna give you my personal review of this Qbot x18 phone which for you guys who love the design of the samsung s8 but are on a very small budget and want the ability to change out the battery non-unibody battery exchangeable exchangeable battery changeable then this might just be the phone for you let's go <laughs> Remember to subscribe to the channel and hit that little notification bell if you're new and want to be notified every time I post a new video. Also, if you are interested in any of the best and latest deals on devices, whether that be smartphones, Android boxes, tablets, laptops and PCs, etc. And also some great deals on some of the best VPNs, please check out the video description below. All the information will be left there. Right, so as you can see here, this is the Qbot X18. You can see on the top there the little X18. Qbot on the side. And then if you just flip onto the back, as you can see here, we've got some of the specs. So we may as well get right down to the specs of it. So we've got a 5.7 IPS 18 by 9 HD display. The same aspect screen as the Samsung S8 quad core CPU. We've got three gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage. We've also got a micro SIM times two, Android 7.0 and it has a fingerprint sensor, and it says there, that's quite a claim, 0.1 second unlocked. Now that's a very, very big claim. We're gonna see exactly how that stands up. And in terms of battery capacity, a 3,200 milliamp battery, and that should be a pretty decent lasting battery life, especially when you think about the fact that you can interchange it. So you can take out the battery and replace it. So the actual uh, battery life of this phone could last you for days if you have a spare. So let's flip this back over and so we're just going to take off the top and as you can see this is the sort of footprint of the phone and as we take this off this actually comes so as you can see this actually has the case already on it but I'm actually going to take that off so you can see the exact form uh, that it comes without the case because it's quite actually a thick case but again it comes free so that's good to see so that's the back lovely gold color it does look actually pretty premium especially when you consider that it's not unibody that you can actually take this back off it doesn't actually look too bad so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take that sticker off there that is a really really nice design phone especially again it's 90 dollars. that's what you've got to think it's really really cheap so we're just actually going to put that to one side just quickly we're just going to see what else is in there you've got um Bits of information, quick start guide there. Then we take this bit out, and there's nothing under there. And then, of course, you have your charger and the cable for that charger there. So we'll just pop that back on there. And we will crack back on. So, as you can see, you've got the small bezel at the top and bottom compared to a lot of phones, especially in this price range. On the bottom, you've got micro USB. I would prefer Type-C, of course. It is better technology, but but that's probably something you can look past uh, due to the sort of budgetness of this phone. We have a headphone jack right at the top there as well. And the ability to have a lot longer use in terms of battery duration is something that probably sets this apart from, say, another Android phone, which I reviewed of a similar price range, which I'll leave up here, with a uh, bezel-less design compared to this one, which is more like the Samsung S8 sort of design. But that battery was smaller, so feel free to check that video out. But if you want bigger battery ability, if that's a... It's not even a phrase, but we're going with it. If you want that ability, then of course this might be better for you. So you've got the speakers on the bottom, which I will get to in a second. You've got your power and your volume rockers on here. If you did want to take the back off to potentially change the battery, you've got this little lip here, which you can just peel off. There you go. As you can see, that is the inside of the phone. So we'll just clip that back on. And that ability to change the battery out is a really big selling point of this phone. So if, especially if you are out and about a lot, you work away from home a lot, you want to take that extra battery, you've then got a battery life of around 6,500 milliamps, which, you know, that's going to last you days. As you can see, power by Android on there and Qbot up there. Just while that's loading up, we'll talk about how this phone actually feels in the hand. So it's very comfortable due to these slur uh, slurved edges. The sloped edges on the side, it is really nice in the hand, like I said, for a fairly big phone, it doesn't feel too big because it's narrower than a lot of phones of the sort of height due to that 18 by 9 ratio, again, like the Samsung, which also feels really nice in the hand. 
obviously it is plastic um, but this actually looks and feels more premium than it kind of actually is which is good however in terms of what I don't like about the design is this almost Christmas tree bauble-esque uh, glossy gold plastic on the bottom. It's not something that I personally, uh, you know, would design a phone like. I think that looks pretty cheap. Um, so if that was matte, then that would look so much better. Again, that's just my personal opinion. You may be different. So the actual display is a 1440 by 720. It is still HD, but not full HD, uh, and it's not 4K. And because of this stretched 18 by 9 ratio, it's not 1280 by 720, it's actually 1440. So again, ideally, if I was looking for an improvement on this phone in the future, at least have 1080. You're not going to notice too much difference, but... I just think it's something that they should consider in the future. In terms of the OS, it is basically stock, which I like to see. There's nothing really on here in terms of bloatware. Let's just click on there for all of the apps. And as you can see, it is there's hardly anything on there. It's just all the Google apps, for example. Um, so again, that is another positive about this phone. You can add to it what you want. It doesn't send you loads of rubbish, uh, to put it politely, because a lot of phones, even... Phones like Samsung S8, for example, will come with a lot of Samsung bloatware, which, again, I personally would just have it like this. You have your recent apps here, you've got your home here, and you've got your back button there. And obviously, it is using Android 7.0, like I mentioned before. So the fingerprint sensor is located on the back here, and it's pretty reliable. It's actually more reliable than the last $90 phone that I reviewed. Um, it says 0.1 seconds on the actual box but it, it's definitely not that quick it's about a second uh so what we'll do is we'll just close that off as you can see and i will go and as you can see it comes on we'll try again so it does work i'll try it slightly differently and even when your fingerprint isn't straight in the middle it still kind of picks it up so it is actually that is better than i was expecting there will be times, obviously, when it won't work. It's only let me down, like, once, I think, to be honest. So, it's, you know, it works literally about 95% of the time, which, for this sort of price bracket, is really quite good. As you can see on there, you've got an 8-megapixel front-facing camera. You've also got a 13-megapixel back camera as well with the flash underneath. We are going to look at that camera now. This is, like I said, 13 megapixels, and it isn't going to be the best for you in terms if you are massively keen on your photographs. But I will take some snapshots now just to show you a rough idea of what you're going to be looking at. So when you are taking photos, you, you can actually hear it focusing inside it, it and you can hear the actual clicks, which obviously the higher end brands, you don't hear that quite as pronounced. So that is definitely something I would improve on this phone. So I will also just try the selfie camera just to see how that does. Now the selfie camera isn't actually as bad as I was expecting and again it's better than the selfie front facing camera on the last budget phone that I reviewed, the VK World Mix Plus. But in terms of the photos they're not horrendous, uh, low light obviously is usually an issue with a lot of these budget phones and this is no different, it does get a bit grainy in low light. Colours are fairly true to life, probably the reds are the most things that pop out in terms of being completely realistic they are slightly oversaturated I feel on the actual reds but outside of that it's fairly true to life and in terms of the actual focusing on the shots it's not the most crisp so you will get slight blurring around certain edges that you would normally expect them to be really quite crisp on a, a more premium smartphone on the subject of ram obviously this comes with three gigabytes and to be honest it's you know it, it works quite well going in and out of different sections i have occasionally got a few stutters a few glitches here and there but again on the whole it pretty much works when you want it to the way things multitask and everything like that i'm quite impressed so i'm just going to play you a little bit of sound now to show you sort of what we're working with in terms of that ability so we'll just click on this uh, we'll click on my review of the xiaomi mi mix 2 Super psyched because today, so as you can hear, when I've gone full volume, it's not great. It is pretty poor. It's, it does go quite loud, but it does really go quite fuzzy as well at that top end. It's got Bluetooth 4.0, so again, in future releases, I would like to see 5. So unfortunately, looking at the specs, you can't actually add additional storage to this, so it does come with 32. I think is the only one that you can actually 
uh, order. Comes in two different colours, gold and uh, like a dark blue. So I am also going to run two benchmark tests on this phone. So we're going to start now with the Antutu benchmark test for, you know, seeing how it's going to do for gaming and, of course, media streaming, things like that. And then I'm going to do a Geekbench 4 as well. Uh, so you can get a rough idea of how this performs uh, with those. So as you can see, again, like we expect with a lot of these really budget phones, you are going to be able to do a little bit of gaming on it, but it's not going to be the best for that. So as you can see on there, they are the list of the bands that it is compatible with. Uh, if you just take a look at those 4G bands there. So if you are looking to buy this for a specific region, make sure that your actual company that you use is actually compatible with those specific bands. So all in all, as you can probably tell, I'm thoroughly actually impressed with this very, very cheap handset fingerprint sensor is better than i was expecting the actual screen is only 720p unfortunately it's not a 1080p it's not 4k headphone jacks on there the camera is probably one of the poorest areas of this phone the design i personally think is really nice with the 18 by 9 ratio the small bezels at the top and bottom i like the two colors they use the gold and of course the dark blue I like the fact it comes stock and there's hardly any bloatware as well. That's another good positive for me. So the sound is quite crackly at the top end. It has micro USB. I would again prefer type C, but not necessarily a deal breaker. I don't like the gold glossy edges around here. I would prefer to see matte, but again, that's me being personally picky. I just think it looks a little bit cheap. But one of the main selling points of this phone is, of course, the fact you can take the back off and you can change the battery. So that's pretty much it, guys. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about this Qbot X18. Uh, uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts, whether it's something that you will be looking for in a new phone or, or a present for somebody, because again, with Christmas coming up, uh, if people are wanting a new phone, this is a, a, a very good budget phone, in my personal opinion. And again, let me know if there's another phone, similar specs, similar design, that of course you either want reviewing or have seen or used and think that some of the viewers might actually benefit from that knowledge in terms of a uh, alternative to this. Like and share if you did enjoy the video and found it helpful. Subscribe and hit that little notification bell next to it. I don't know why I'm pointing at the phone. That's not a bell. Uh, click the bell if you want to be notified every time I post a video. And I'll see you in the next one. Say it's TP's out.